visual artists working with photography to build new realities and restructure how we perceive identities. I had the pleasure of sitting down with Dr. Alessandro Rango, founder of Liquid Blackness, to discuss my project Black Serenity and the ways we perceive race, aesthetics, and space. We're here to talk about Black Serenity. How do you feel that this process where Blackness occupies space, how do you think this intervenes in the processes of photography, especially the way in which it has been historically coiled with visual grammar of race? It's, it's making people question what it is that they see. And I think that's important for the photographic medium because we're always sort of looking at it and saying, okay, this is, it's representative of whatever's in the image itself, but I'm not wanting to do that. You know, it's not just look at me, here's a man, here's a black man, you know, in this space, but what does it all mean? Are you looking at the blackness of my skin in terms of the racial constructs or the you know, sort of sensorial experience of the space that I've created here, the emotional experience that is there? So it's sort of pushing back to say that this is more expansive than what you may initially think it is. There is a way in which the, the images trigger a undoing of the sovereign subject that is looking at them because of the way in which blackness envelops the entire space. What kind of response do you imagine to these images? In a lot of my work, you know, beyond this Black Serenity, I am sort of looking at the connection between physical body, our forms, and the external space, and also our internal space as well. And how do these sort of two things in which we usually separate to a high degree actually come together? And also thinking in terms of fragmentation, where beings, these amalgamations, you know, these tiny little fragments. And so having that non-distinction of the body and space and sort of the blending of the two is getting at the notion of that we are space and space is us. And so I guess it's, it's rebellious in a way of that dualistic thinking, uh, you know, thinking in terms of everything is a dichotomy, but there's again that spectrum. You know? I think what I was actually looking for is silence, a silence of the mind or, you know, a vibrational silence. So I guess in a way, yes, it is vibrational, but a lack of vibration. And so I wanted there to sort of be this softness quality in um, what it looks like, the sort of expressions, you know, in the body. I think there is a vibrational impact in some way because there's movement and that will cause sort of this reverberation. They don't participate in the same kind of quasi-metaphysical stillness that photography has enacted on Black bodies. Mm -hmm. So in, a, in that sense, they feel vibrational even though that vibration, as you said, seems to be attached to the possibility of holding stillness. And so in that sense, those vibrational qualities come through because you, you can feel the two poles confronting themselves in the same image. So there is mm -hmm. the stillness that is associated with peacefulness and serenity. And then there is the, the work of getting there. Right. I grew up in predominantly white areas. Um, and so I was very much always hyper aware of my blackness, but I never allowed it to sort of completely cover me because of how blackness is perceived in our culture and our society. There were certain incidences that did lead me to sort of um, isolate myself because I knew that I was different, because the world saw me as different. And so in order for protection, you know, I wanted to sort of block out the world, even though I'm in it. There's still parts of me where that lingers today, but the struggle is having to get to, you know, that place of solitude, that place of stillness, that place of where I'm able to hold, you know, that space for myself um, and possibly for others as well. And so it's a tumultuous space, you know, it's scary because you're usually operating in it by yourself, you know, and so that's where you kind of feel that darkness, that blackness. But then as I sort of allowed myself to succumb to the blackness and I allowed it to sort of be where it's at, then I was able to sort of understand it in a different way. You know, one of my favorite musicians, Trevor Hall, sings about this, you know, the dark within my dark is where I found my life. And I think that's just a really beautiful saying because, you know, a lot of the emotional pain and traumas you know, that we experience as Black Americans, it follows us and we have to sort of unravel it in order to understand it and heal from it. And so that's where Black Trinity sort of was this point again of sort of understanding the fragmentation that's occurred within me um, because of how I, how I see myself, how the world sees me. 
and having to piece that back together in order to find wholeness.